What is up, everybody? And we are back after that disaster episode last time out in Jeddah. If you uh, didn't see it, make sure you go watch it. It's probably quite a funny watch, actually. Um, but yeah, we had Pierre Gazzi crash out. Magnuson crash at the exact same time. Brings out a safety car. Uh, and Magnuson drops all the way down to P17, P18. And, um, and then spins again or locks up again. And I think he ended up finishing P14, P13, something like that. Uh, anyway, it was a tragic show. Uh, Pierre Gazzi got a DNF and he forced us to, to go buy some more parts for him. Um, I think he partly damaged his chassis as well. So not not a great re race weekend. I, I would say it's one of our um, more forgetful ones as uh, neither driver got into the points. But it was looking like a promising double points finish. And uh, it definitely affected us in the standings as we want to fight for P3 with Alfa Romeo and Mercedes. Uh, but we can't do that when it's like that. So um, we need a big point scoring re weekend here in uh, in australia and we're actually gonna have a look how does our car perform here in australia so if we have a look at the car analysis um not the best compared to the grid and so it could be another tough tough weekend and um in, should we change the car just okay oh okay there we go so car one had some damage so that's why but if you see um it doesn't look too bad compared to the rest of the grid we show our rank and you can see we're around 7th, 9th, 9th, 5th. Um, but the crucial ones are here. So high-speed corners, we are 5th, 7th. Uh, so we're looking around the same, you know, at the back end of the points. Um, trying to beat Alfa Romeo and Mercedes. And it could come down to strategy. So we'll keep working on the upgrades. Keep going on. We did use quite a bit of money to upgrade some facilities. But other than that, nothing new has really changed. Alright, so here's the first... Uh, regulation vote change of the season as you know we may face a regulation change that defines formula one's rules between seasons so this is for the 2024 season and it's a minor technical change um so it's cooling changes or airflow focused changes um we already have issues with cooling i i think we vote for the cooling changes instead of the airflow we we changed i think it was Something to do with the airflow last time. But um, we'll change the cooling. See if that works. Also, you ready for this? Pierre Gazzi has ruined his engine, his ERS, and his gearbox. So you can bet your life he's taken several grid penalties this season. Um, as we have to change everything for this next Grand Prix in Australia. You only get two of these now. So, nice one, Pierre. You, you pretty much... You pretty much screwed yourself over in the second race of the season all of kevin magnuson's stuff is fine i believe so we don't have to worry about him but um yep that is a good start to his Haas career for pierre gazzi oh it's the side pods the side pods okay so the side pods are in um they're not going to come in before australia but we can get them in over a certain amount of time if we rush them it'll be an extra 150k how good does the rush actually do though but you know what? Um, we've got we've got a lot of money. We'll rush it. We'll rush it. So we'll make sure those get in pretty soon. We've got the front wing upgrade coming in, which I think is the biggest of all the upgrades. We have upgraded the factory as well. We're working on our facilities. If you haven't seen our facilities, um, you can see we are upgrading them quite a bit. We probably need to upgrade the wind tunnel as well. I need to focus on upgrading the car development facilities a little bit more because I've been upgrading these at a rapid rate. And um, just because they're less expensive. But the uh, car development ones are what we need to focus on a little bit more. Um, everything is good. So let's get into race weekend and see if we can have a much better race weekend this week. Is it going to be raining is another question. No, just cloudy. So uh, let's see if we can put in a good strategy and um, do something this weekend and come home with a double points finish like we did in Bahrain. All right, so Q1 was pretty comfortable. Both drivers in the top 10, and they comfortably made it through. Only problem I have is, look, you see, we only have one fresh set of soft tires. So I put Magnussen out on a used set. Gasly had to go out on his used set for his second run in Q1 just to make sure he went through because he got held up in his first lap. But we only have one new set, which is a bit concerning. So I put Magnussen out on a used set. Now we're going to send him out on a new set at the end of the session along with Pierre Gasly. So we're running a bit risky with Gasly, not putting him out for a single lap just yet. But we just don't have we don't have the tyres. I don't know where the extra set of tyres has gone. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's happened there. But basically, we're going to go out right in the end with both drivers to try and make it 
into Q3. Magnussen looks like he could be pretty safe. It looks like some drivers aren't going to go out again. So Verstappen has already done his run. Ricardo coming into the pits now might not go out again. Neither Ocon. Magnussen might be okay, but we're going to send him out regardless. We have to send out Pierre Gazzi, which we are going to right now. We're not going to send out Magnussen until we see other drivers coming out of the pits because we have seen this before where no one else will come out and it doesn't look like anybody else is coming out. So Magnussen is through. Now it's down to Pierre Gazzi to put himself into Q3. He's the only one out there on the track. Magnussen safely through. Can we knock out Fernando Alonso? Let's see what Gazzi has got in his locker. This is very, very important. I would say he's improving, but he hasn't even set a lap in. Hamilton is out. Vettel is out. Guan Yu Zhou is out. Ricardo is out. Is Fernando Alonso or Pierre Gazzi going to join him? The pressure is on Pierre Gazzi. What can he do as he comes across the line? Where's he going to put his car? He puts it up in a P5 safely into q3 we've got decent pace here in australia both drivers in q3 so it looks like every single other team are having that problem as well with the soft tires and that right there is why i did not want to send magnuson out because if i sent him out on a new set and he got held up it would have been absolutely pointless but now we're going to send him out on a new set of softs and he's got an extra pair for the race as well it doesn't look like anybody else is going out oh there they go a red ball comes out so we are the first ones out of the pit lane as everybody else follows on out um, so let's see what our drivers could do. Magnussen on his only flying lap of the session. Pierre Gazzi currently P2, but um, granted Perez, Sainz, Leclerc, Russell, they haven't really put in a representative lap time. But we're going to see where both drivers are going to go now. Magnussen is going to be the first one to cross the line. As he comes up to the line, where can he put his car? Can he put it in the top five? At least for now, he goes up to P3 behind Pierre Gazzi. I'm sure he's going to drop rapidly. Gazzi does improve a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see where we finish as Perez goes P2. Sainz moves up to P2 now. Lando Norris, what has he got in his locker? Car go ahead of Kevin Magnussen. Verstappen is going to stay P1. George Russell splits both house cars. Uh, Leclerc now goes up to P2. Ocon and Bottas. We've seen Bottas this season. He's been rapid, but he can only go P7. Pierre Gazzi is starting on the third row in P5. He is best of the rest if you think Red Bull and Ferrari are out there. Uh, um, Kevin Magnussen getting P8 as well, but he's got that extra set of soft tyres for the race, which could become crucial um and it gives us a bit more of strategy options for kevin magnuson on the other hand pierre gazzi used up all his softs to the maximum so let's see we're gonna go we'll go medium to, to hards for pierre and with uh kevin magnuson we're gonna go hards to mediums now we could change that to hards to softs um we could do hards mediums it depends on the safety car but if a safety car comes out late we do have that option to put him on a set of soft tires uh, but yeah, so we're going to go all, different strategies for both drivers, but starting P8 and P5, this could be a very, very strong Grand Prix for us. I say that, but last time out in Jeddah, it was not. Um, it was a very, very poor Grand Prix. So now we're hoping for a good one. Here we go. Ready for the start. We've got Pierre Gazzi up in P5, Kevin Magnussen on the other side of the grid in P8. And it looks like that McLaren got a fantastic start ahead of Kevin Magnussen. It looked like Magnussen was poor off the line. He's already dropped a position. Same with Pierre Gasly. So not the best start for both drivers. Bottas gets it ahead of K-Mag. Well, I think he was ahead of K-Mag. But uh, Magnussen loses a couple places, almost making contact. So both drivers down a place off the start. Gasly's is a little more, more frustrating. It's happened again. It's happened again. This time on lap one. On lap one, he's crashed into the back of the Mercedes. It's a collision. We can take a look now. Oh, my now, days. We, we were riding on board as he did that. He, he, he locked up and he's hit George Russell. And they've both gone flying off. He's lost his front wing. George Russell's gone flying into the gravel as well. I think both drivers kept going, but that's absolutely tragic. Magnussen up into P7. A penalty for Pierre Gasly as well. And he's just wrecking this car like there's no tomorrow. I thought he was going to be fantastic signing. But I don't know what he's doing. So we're going to put him onto a set of hard tyres now. Um, it's a tragic start to the Grand Prix. Um, we need to make sure we actually change his front wing. It, it, his front wing is being changed. He's got a time penalty of five seconds. Magnus, on the other hand, um, kept going. He's up in a P7, so it's been a good start for him. But what a stinky start that is for Pierre Gasly. Russell's actually kept going, so I don't think he had any damage. George Russell, P19. Um, a little annoying that he didn't have any damage because we're fighting with the Mercedes and the Alfa Romeo. But Pierre Gasly, 34 seconds off the pace. 
Um, his race pretty much over unless something happens, which is very, very frustrating indeed. But we'll, um, we'll get him to keep going. Magnuson up into P6, now into P5. And let's see if he can continue this momentum. He's actually pulled a bit of a gap from Bottas. As multiple ca cars crashed again, please be a safety car. We need this for Pierre Gasly. Um, and it could be very interesting. I'm not sure who's involved. It's on lap six. No safety car just yet. So I don't think a safety car is coming out. But it's the Williams drivers, which I think is Mick Schumacher and I can't remember the other one. But they're going side by side and they do make a bit of contact and everybody has to slow down. And George Russell, there you go, double overtake for George Russell. But no safety car necessary, which is a little bit frustrating. Mag All right, first round of pit stops. So a bunch of people are in. Are they a bunch of medium runners? They're going onto the hards. They're trying to take the hards to the end of the Grand Prix. I'm not sure if they will get to the end of the Grand Prix, but anyway, they have done that. Gazi is closing in on Latifi up ahead. Magnussen is still with Lando Norris. We're kind of trying to preserve the tyres just a little bit more so they can keep going a little bit longer. They're right around where they're supposed to be, to be fair, for his strategy, but we don't want to wear them out too much. We'll just try and stick on the back of this train and save the tyres as Verstappen comes out behind us. So maybe we'll frustrate him a little bit. But we don't want to really ruin our race. But Pierre Gasly still down in P18. Trying to get past the Aston Martin of Latifi. Should make easy work of that just right now. No, he hasn't got the move done just yet. So we're going to ride on board to help him out. To make sure he can get past this Aston Martin at the earliest opportunity. We're going to go for a move right around now. As he's going to get DRS down this straight and the next one. See you later. And uh, now he can get going and... Um, Keep trying to progress up the grid in case something crazy happens. Magnussen in P2. He's dropped away from the DRS of Fernando Alonso, which is a bit annoying. But he is trying to make these hard tyres go for as long as possible. And he's back into that one second margin. So we're trying to get to around lap 34, I think, with um, Kevin Magnussen. And then we're going to look to pit him on to the medium tyre. But now Magnussen is in this little train with the front runners, which I think is okay. If he stays in this train, keeps getting DRS, it's not going to be too hurtful for him, I don't think. Um, but it, once he drops out is the moment that we pit him. And you know what? He's dropped out of it already. I think we pit him right now. They, I think they said now is the optimal time. So we're going to pit him onto the medium tyre. And we're going to take them all the way to the end of the Grand Prix. Where is he going to come out relative to Fernando Alonso, who did just pit? He comes out quite a bit behind. So that little battle up ahead did kind of hinder him. He comes out behind Lewis Hamilton as well. Which is kind of frustrating. But if we can just sit behind um, and slowly close in, that would be very, very good indeed. Gazzy is still running his own little race. We're about to pit him onto the medium tyre as well. But we can get him to go a couple more laps. So he has a bit more um, tyre advantage at the end. But P16, he's still got a pit when no one else does. So that's how bad of a situation Pierre Gazzy is in. I think he's also got... What is it? It's still a damaged chassis. So maybe we need to switch the chassis after this Grand Prix as well. Um, because they were saying that last Grand Prix. So maybe we should have switched it just in case. But we're going to put him on a new set of medium tyres. And um, we can see where he could finish. I think P16 or P15 is going to be the best possible scenario for him. As he just gets out ahead of Nicholas Atifi. And now he can get going. Now he can just drive and see how much time he can gain but our main focus is on kevin magnuson who's struggling to catch the cars up ahead um down in p9 as more people come to the pits okay so people are doing um a two-stop strategy hamilton onto the mediums bottas onto the mediums ricardo uh, had already pit before but now they're behind us after they pit again 11 seconds we're, we're closed in on sergio perez who is on a brand new set of mediums as well. Norris, I think, is going to the end. And same with Fernando Alonso. If we could stay with Sergio Perez, that could be very, very big for Kevin Magnus's race. We don't really want to overtake him. We just want to go light on the tyres, stay in the DRS, and we could stay with Sergio Perez. But we go for the move and we get past Perez. Probably not the best thing. We kind of want to use him to catch up. So we're going, still going light on the tyres. We're going to go balanced on the fuel. And it seems to be working right now. Uh, we're staying with Perez. We actually get ahead once again. It's not really a move we want to make just yet. As now Perez goes ahead after we do some harvesting. And he gets actually way too far ahead for our liking. So maybe we should have stayed ahead of Perez. But Perez back through. And now we can try 
and closing up ahead as as Perez and Norris go for a little battle. And if we can catch into the, uh, if we could join that battle, we could be on for a potential P5 again, maybe even P4 if we close up to Fernando Alonso. We've got eight laps to go. Norris and Perez really going at it. We just can't close that gap down. And I'm just worried about using up all our tires. That is the main worry because we want to stay ahead of Hamilton and Bottas. Where is Pierre Gasly to the rest of the grid? He's down in p16 still and he's been lapped so it's not been a fun day for him but kevin magnuson just can't join that battle it's very very frustrating we're going to tell him to push with a bit of ers this next lap and i don't think it's worked yeah so i think we're gonna have to settle for p7 for kevin magnuson which honestly is not a bad result at all it's just pierre gasly had a howler on lap one bottas has pulled away from lewis hamilton so I think Bottas is going to comfortably get P8. But at least we're going to finish ahead of an Alfa Romeo. But it's another double points finish for Alfa Romeo with Vettel and Bottas. You get two experienced drivers. They don't crash as much as um, Kevin Magnussen and Pierre Gasly will. So P7 for Kevin Magnussen is a solid result. P16 for Pierre Gasly. We're going to have to sort out his chassis problem. And um, we're going to have to repair, uh, bring in more parts because he's just ruining everything. So he's basically um, costing us a lot of money. So six points for Haas. We'll take whatever points we can get. Uh, you have a look at the constructors. 20 points. We're in P5. Mercedes with 30 in P4. And Alfa Romeo 39 in P3. So that battle for P3 is definitely on the cards. McLaren get a few more. Alpine um, getting a few as well. So don't rule them out of that little battle. Because Alpine, I think, got P4 in this race. Did they? Or P5 with Fernando Alonso, which is a solid solid grand prix for them so i'm actually excited for this season it's very um well-rounded i guess you could say and it's it's nice to see alfa romeo all of a sudden in the mix at the front so I, I like to see that but i think it was an okay weekend it was a good weekend kevin magnuson obviously a really bad one for pierre gasly and uh, he needs a good one especially in italy so uh, we'll see if he can do something in imola we've got 11 days until the next grand prix i'm actually going to do this now just so i don't forget so yeah he does need a new chassis um we're gonna need to order a new one in jesus christ manufacture a new one of these manufacture born three new ones um okay so ruin some more so that will come in in seven days the grand prix is not for 11 but at least we'll get that in but we did get what was it a front wing um I think there was a front wing upgrade as well. So you can see, yep, here we go. So we're going to manufacture some of these. Will these come in before the Grand Prix? Yes, they will. So we'll get more new front wings in. So we're going to have quite a few upgrades for Imola. So maybe we'll be a little faster in Imola. I'm just making sure I get this get this all done now so I don't forget. We're going to have a front wing upgrade. We're going to have side pod upgrades as well. Um, and we've got more manufacturing coming in. I think I could have put a new side pod on for that last Grand Prix, but uh, I completely forgot. So we're going to have a couple new upgrades for the next Grand Prix, and I think that's going to work very, very well for us. Oh my gosh. Oh no, he hasn't. Okay, I thought for a second Pierre Gasly ruined more of his power units, but that is it for episode three three of season two you can see we are p5 in the constructors we could have had a much better start we could honestly be p3 right now but um a little disappointing kevin magnuson carrying the team once again this season but i'm sure pierre gazzi once he gets settled into this car can get some good point scoring positions if you are enjoying this series make sure you go ahead leave a like um comment what you where you think we're going to finish this season and just let me know how you're feeling about the series uh, or anything on the video and i'll try and get back to you and uh yeah make sure you subscribe as well and i'll see you guys next time peace